G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I haven't done a video for a little while, so I thought I'd do another one, show you what I'm up to. I'm still alive and kicking. And I've been doing a lot of brass work lately. And this is all due to uh, Alan from Retro Steam Tech. It's all your fault, Alan. Uh, you shouldn't send me brass. <laughs> I have to do something with it. And Alan's been egging me on to make a boiler. And he, did, he made a boiler, did a good job. So I thought, yeah, I'm really getting fed up, browned off with this sterling project. It's been going on and on and on. I've had about five uh, iterations of it, variations. And I thought, time to do something different. So we fired up the old uh, CQ9325, and I've been turning brass. Remember that brass? Yep, that brass. There's that brass hiding under the under the uh, lathe stand. And it was really generous of Alan to send me that. That stuff's damn expensive and uh, he wouldn't take a bean for it. And yeah, I was pretty impressed with that. Good stuff. Thanks, Alan. So, as I've got a, you know, fed up Sterling eyes and things, <laughs> not getting anywhere. Crunch those numbers. The trouble is, once you, when you do sterlings, if you ever vary the stroke, you know, if you ever sort of have unequal strokes, it's a, it's a downward trail to doom and gloom because you never ever get the airflow, the gas flow correct. So I've really got to make up another power piston, smaller diameter, and go start from scratch again. I'll show you where, where that's at anyway. Yeah, well there she is. Looks great. Looks fantastic. But it doesn't run. It's got to run or it's no bloody good. And I kept reducing and reducing and reducing the power piston. I reduced the uh, diameter of the um, cross tube. Get rid of as much dead space as possible. But I've still got to bring this display this uh, power piston size down which means if I'm going to do that well I might as well make up a whole new section here because you know I've stepped this down like three times and I can't shorten the stroke anymore so I've got to I've got to reduce the diameter it's one or the other and uh, so that'll be happening one day but at the moment I'm fed up with it so I've gone on to boiler making I've become a boiler maker yeah, who would have thought, eh? So I'll show you what I've been up to. Remember this little baby? When I bought the share line at a bargain price, so I got this at the same place. It was deceased estate. And I got it for a song, 20 bucks. Pretty amazing. And I've shown in previous videos this thing going. I've got to hook up the air. I'll step in the air in the compressor. Oh, yeah, a bit of air there. Oh, look at that baby go. Slow it down a bit. Get it a bit level. It's a great little thing, isn't it? I mean, I love these sort of machines. They're so fantastic. I believe this was made in Queensland from comments I got. And uh, it's a little honey. And what I've done is I've lifted the base up off of this wooden block. So now I'll just speed up a bit more. There you go. Now you can look underneath and you can see the bits whizzing around and going around and it looks a lot better. I just did it in steel because this is steel and I'm not going to restore this. I'm just going to leave the patina on it as it is. I don't think I'll even bother painting the base. But I will take the block and do away with the block and put a nice big piece of jarra and then I'm going to have a, a boiler over here and I want to run this off of steam. This is a definite candidate for running on steam. I'll stop it. Now the way it was originally was this plate, which is thin gauge, but it's uh, high tensile. It's only held on with two screws, one diagonally and nothing here. And it sat on this side of the block and they've done a really <laughs> rough old job making room for the flywheel and the Conrod 
you know, to give it clearance. So, you know, it looked pretty cruddy. So I've lifted it up now, and it's going to, so as I said, sit on a nice piece of jarrah. And we're going to have a boiler over here. <laughs> How cool is that, eh, guys? A boiler, and this thing's going to run on steam. That's the plan. Now, by lifting it up also, it gives you enough clearance that you can run pulleys on it, you know, without end particularly. Uh, you can easily, you know, step it out, have it overhanging, so I can run off a pulley off e either end. And you've got enough clearance there for uh, a grub screw in a, you know, into a section of pulley here, just just get it clearing the, the base. So, yeah, lots of possibilities. So what's this... Uh, What's this uh, boiler look like? Well, I've never made a boiler in my life before, so I'll show you where I'm at with it. So, here's the boiler. Extraordinaire. So, here's the filler. That's a little cap I made up. That silver soldered in. The, uh, the ends are silver soldered in. That's just some round stuff I sliced off. Got a level level plug there. Little brass screw will go on there. I've still got to clean all this up, you know, it looks a bit grotty at the moment because it's just been, you know, under the flame torch. And this is the outlet and I can either go 90 degrees, that's threaded and a lock nut, so it, there's enough wall thickness to do this because it's I'm using that 26 TPI BSB British Standard Brass set I've got. I've got a gum tree for peanuts. So I can go 90 degrees across to the, to the engine, or I can come vertically up with a, uh, a fitting like, like this, basically. That can come up and just go up and cross at 90 degrees because this probably is going to sit down a bit lower than the level on the, of the input on the engine. Now, this is the blow-off valve. And this is one I got off a junk air compressor, one of those cheap Chinese ones, those tiny little ones, you know, that they always pack up and they're pretty crappy, really. And I was going to make up a blow-off valve, but by the time you make one up, it's going to be about the same size, so I thought it was pointless, you know. They're pretty simple, just a screw down thing with a ball bearing and a spring, you know, pretty easy. I had this, but it was set for 100, you know, it had 120 psi spring in it, which was way too high. So I opened her up and I put in a, a lighter spring and now it blows off at 12, 12 psi. So the boiler's only going to be pressurised into about 10 psi, probably maximum because that little motor runs at uh, five, oh, 3 or 4 or 5 psi, very, very low. It hardly, it hardly registers. So, But then I might want to drive something with it, you know. You, know, you can get those neat little governors from Banggood that well, Alan got one of those. They look really <laughs> they look really cool. I wouldn't mind hooking one of those up to the motor. So there's all sorts of possibilities. And then I've got to also put an on-off tap so that it can build up pressure before I actually flick the switch. So I've got to put a tap somewhere, so I could even put a tap here maybe, and then bleed off from the tap. I haven't decided yet, there's still lots of things to happen, so... But yeah, turned out okay. It's, uh, it's all silver soldered, you know, where it needs to be, and it's uh, never going to blow up or anything, so... Overall, I'm quite, quite pleased with it. Right, I'll put it next to the motor and we can see how it's going to line up. So the plan is we use this big piece of jarrah to sort of reduce it to about so wide, sit the engine, this end of it, on its risers, and then the, uh, the boiler will be sitting here. I've gone for the straight up outlet so the Copper pipe will come out and 90 degree bend and go into the inlet port on the steam engine. And the whole thing will sit up about, probably about, about like that with burners under it. It can probably sit in a cradle or you, I'm not sure what I'll do. You could use end plates and just mount it on end plates. 
I've just used the matho burners from the Banggood engine, steam engine I've got for now just to get it going. And uh, yeah, so I need to find a place to put an on-off on tap too, I think, because otherwise it could bleed steam while it's trying to build up pressure. So you really want a little tap to shut things off until it gets up enough head of steam to do the job. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Lots to lots to think about, and this is a bit of a heads up on where I'm at and what I'm doing, and to be continued. All right, that's it for me. Things are warming up here too. Going to get some more 30 degree weather coming up. So, yep, summer's on the way. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.